Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video we are going to discuss about one of the important chapter that is plant growth and development. First we need to understand the meaning of this word growth. Whenever we say there is a growth, first of all growth is a permanent process. It means it cannot be reversed. So I can say that growth is an irreversible process. At the same time growth is an intrinsic process. It means when you are growing, you will grow from inside not from outside. Growth indicates physiological maturation. It means if there is physiological maturation, there has to be a growth. Whenever I take a seed, I put it in water, what happens? The seed absorbs the water. The seed coat swells up and it breaks. And what comes out first is the radical. So what we need to understand here students, in seed germination, the first thing that comes out from the seed is the radical. And this radical is responsible for giving rise to root system. After that what comes out is the plumule and the plumule is responsible for the shoot system. This radical and plumule they will grow further finally forming the root system and the shoot system and after that it will grow into a plantlet. This plantlet will further grow and it will form a huge tree. So what we can say this is a permanent process there is no such possibility that this plantlet will again become seed so it is an irreversible process. And whenever growth is taking place, it is from inside, so it is intrinsic. There is physiological maturation taking place. This tree now is going to bear fruits and inside the fruit there will be seed and the cycle is going to start again. This entire process that I have shown in the diagram is indicating plant growth. Very important to understand here. Growth is irreversible, growth is permanent, there is intrinsic and it shows physiological maturation. This is what is growth in simple way. Now, whenever we talk about growth, there has to be some standard definition for growth because it is not possible to define in a simplest way. So let's understand. First of all, growth is a physiological process in which there is increase in dry weight of the plant. When I say dry weight of the plant, it means there has to be no water. So how I can define growth in the simplest way? So I will say, that growth is defined as a vital process. Vital process means very important process which brings about irreversible increase in any organism. Now it can be plant, even it can be animal. So in any organism or its part with respect to its size, form, weight and volume. This is the exact definition for growth student and this is what we need to know. When we talk about things, there are two types of things involved. The first will be living and second is non-living. Now if I ask you which one will show growth and which one will not show growth. So remember students, living and non-living things both will show growth. The only difference that we observe is in living things the growth is permanent. In non-living thing it is temporary. In living the growth is intrinsic. In non-living it is extrinsic. In living thing it is irreversible and in non-living it is reversible. In case of living thing, the in growth there is increase in dry weight, but in non-living thing there is no such increase in dry weight. When I say living thing, for example, a seed becoming into a tree. But when I say non-living thing, small small rocks, when they join together, they form big mountain. And this mountain can be again broken down into rocks. Therefore, we say in non-living things, the growth is temporary, extrinsic, reversible. But in living things, it is permanent, intrinsic and irreversible. Whenever we talk about unicellular organism students, you need to understand that the unicellular organism, they will always grow in size and number. But the moment they grow in size, they always divide by binary fission to increase in number. So like unicellular organism, multicellular will not show such type of growth. Let's talk about the seed dormancy. What is dormancy? First of all, we need to understand. For that, to explain the word dormancy, I would like to show one experiment. Take few seeds, gram seeds. And these gram seeds you are going to keep it in water. You keep it for overnight one day what will happen? It will swell up. If I keep it for two days what will happen sir? Sprouting will take place and seeds are going to germinate. That is what we know. But do you know that all those hundred seeds of gram that I have soaked in water. I will say that 99% of the seeds will germinate. But at least one or two seeds will be in such a form that they have not germinated. They remain hard as they are. It means I have provided the favorable condition to the seeds that is water still after getting the favorable condition the seeds are not germinating it means that seed is following dormancy. How can I define dormancy? Dormancy is defined as a process where the seed fails to germinate 
even under all favorable conditions. You give all the favorable conditions required for the seed to germinate. Still, if the seed is not germinating, it means I can say that the seed is following dormancy. Remember this, students. So, let's understand what are the various reasons for dormancy, why the seed fails to germinate, or what makes it to follow dormancy. Now, there can be two reasons. Basically, I will put it in this way. First, I will show the cause by the reason for dormancy and then I will show you the method how you can break the dormancy. The first reason for dormancy is hard seed coat students. Now when I say hard seed coat it means the seed coat is so much hard that it does not allow the water to enter inside and if the seed coat is hard then germination cannot take place because we all know that the first step for germination is breaking of the seed coat. Second reason for dormancy is impermeable to water sometimes the seed coats are thick enough so that it will not allow the water and gases to enter inside that will help in germination the third reason can be immature embryo it means the embryo that is present inside the seed is immature as a result the seed is following dormancy fourth reason can be light sensitive seed it means the seed is not getting specific wavelength of sunlight so that it can do germination and the fifth one, the most important one is the presence of germination inhibitors. There are certain chemicals which are present inside the seed and is not allowing the seed to germinate. So let's understand students how we can break the dormancy. First, if there is a hard seed coat, you can use two methods. Either you can use scarification method or you can use stratification method. What do you mean by scarification? It simply means that you are making the seed scared. Now how will you do that? You make use of knife, you make use of HCL or you make use of sandpaper. Basically by knife what you are going to do, you are going to cut the seed coat so that the seed coat becomes thin and germination takes place. You can use HCL, dip it in concentrated HCL so as to dissolve the hard seed coat and the seed germination should take place. For smaller seeds following dormancy, we can make use of sandpaper. When we use sandpaper, logically what happens? The seed they rub against the sandpaper and as a result what happens the seed, the seed coat becomes thin and this is how scarification works. Second method is stratification method. What is stratification? You make use of temperature. You can use low temperature. Under low temperature what happens the seed coat shrinks and as a result the seed coat can break or even you can use warmer temperature of 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. In warm temperature what happens the seed coat becomes loose and as a result it can easily break. So scarification and the stratification are the two methods for breaking the seed dormancy if they are following dormancy due to hard seed coat. Second is impermeable to water and gases. So what we need to do under this condition students supply huge amount of water and gas to the seed so that it germinates. Then the third reason is the immature embryo. Under immature embryo we don't have any option to do we have to wait for the seed to get matured. Once the seed embryo gets matured then only the seed can germinate. Light sensitive seeds, so we need to provide specific wavelength of light. It can be blue color wavelength or red color wavelength light and this light will allow the seed to germinate at a proper time. Last we have presence of germination inhibitor. See students there are some chemicals which are present inside the seed and it does not allow the seed to germinate. So what we need to do, wash the seed thoroughly in water so that the germination whatever chemical is present the germination inhibitors get easily removed this is how you can break dormancy of any seed and germination inhibitors we can use some hormones like auxin gibberellins etc in nature how it is done students so when rainfall comes the seed that is present it flows along with the rain and it rubs against the soil surface so that it is acting like a sandpaper and this is how it helps in seed germination Nature has its own mechanism. In the next video students, I will be talking about types of seed germination. Don't forget to give a like to the video students if you have understood. Your support motivates me to make more such easy videos for you. This is Sunil sir saying goodbye to you. Study well. Thank you very much.